Sure, it sounds like a storybook. That first kiss is all it took, and the next day we were off and running. A ring a day and some wedding vows. A baby boy, look at us now, sing. I'll always be right here. Yeah, I know it sounds crazy to say love at first sight, but the day. Turn out quite right And you find yourself Praying for more time Sure it sounds like a storybook But that first kiss is all it took And the next day We were off and running Ring a day and some wedding vows That baby boy Look at him now saying I'll always be right here I'll always be right here Big day tomorrow, first day of school What's the matter, Abby? I don't want to go to school Why not? It's scary no, it's not so bad. Yes, it is. You want to hear a story on why you don't need to be afraid? It's a true story. A really cool one. But I got to warn you, the beginning is kind of scary. Scary? And sad, but it gets magical and wonderful and funny. But I know you don't like scary. Does it have a happy ending? Oh, yeah. Okay. You won't be scared. You sure? I'm Stars with Mom. I'm Big Girl Mom. Yes, you are, and very brave. Okay, this is about a little boy who's a little older than you. But here's the sad part. His mommy was really, really sick, and the doctors couldn't fix it. Chance? Chance, can you get me a drink of juice? Your mom needs you. <coughs> You're my little angel. I love you so. I can't stand this any longer. I gotta get out of the house. Wait, don't go! Take care of your mother. You're in charge.
Mom. Mommy! <gasps> the mommy died? Yes, she did. I thought I told you it was gonna be sad in the beginning. Do you wanna stop? I think we should continue and get to the fun and magical part, but it's up to you. Let's keep going. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leaves me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. at home. Uh, hey folks. Uh, I'm so sorry, but um, John is uh, really not up to having guests at this time. Hey. Hi, Grandma. Are you okay, honey? No, of course you're not. Uh, we so appreciate you being here, but um, I think it best if uh, we just let father and son have some alone time together, okay? Hey, where's your little dog? What's his name? Abba? Yeah, where's Abba? Buddy. Where you been all day? Where are you going? Come on. Come on, don't be like that. Stop! Ow! <sighs> Sorry. Hey, did you eat yet? Come on. Come on, let's go eat. Sorry to hear about your wife last month. Your mom, she was a really nice lady. I'll have a rum and cola, Brad. Hold, hold the cola. Sure, John. And how about you, Chance? How do you like a Roy Rogers? Roy Rogers, Brad? A Roy Rogers? He doesn't know who Roy Rogers is. That was 60 years ago. You're living in the past, old man. That's no good. But he keeps telling me that's no good! Hey, what do you want to eat? Nothing. You gotta eat. Why? Well, he must be hungry. No! Come on, he didn't eat yesterday. He didn't eat the day before. Mom didn't eat for a week. Is that it? Chance. 
Your mom was sick. Where were you? Where were you? You left us all alone, and I didn't know what to do. And she died. It's your fault. I hate you. I hate you. I guess you really go. Take it from here, Doris. Hi, Chance. I'm Miss Johnson. I'm here to take care of you. My dad? Your dad is in the other room talking to the policeman right now. What did he do wrong? When was the last time you ate Chance? Maybe we should get some. Did your dad do that? It's okay. You're safe with me. I won't let anything bad happen to you, little angel. Karen and Chuck Chilton, Chance's grandparents. Where is he? He's inside with Jenny Johnson from Child Protective Services. Protection? Okay. Protection against what? John? I don't think I like this story. You said it was about magic. This is not fun at all. I know, but it was important for you to know why the boy acted the way he did. See, it wasn't the dad's fault or the boy's fault that the mom died, but they both blamed themselves. Why? Because when people are afraid, they don't think straight. Like, you're afraid of going to school tomorrow. There's nothing to be afraid of, but you're still upset. Don't worry. Here's when the story gets super fun and you'll figure out why you don't ever have to be afraid. Are you ready for some magic? Okay, now. They sent the boy to live at his grandparents' house, who were really nice. But since the boy was still mad at his dad and himself, the boy was not acting nice at all. Now the letter from the school. Lying, cheating, talking back, and flunking out. I saw him. Say, how'd that meeting with social services go? Even that nice Miss Johnson, whom he really seems to like, couldn't convince him to visit his father. But it's his daddy. He flat out refuses. Honestly, I'm not sure that I blame him. Come on, Karen, the man just lost his wife. The man lost his mind. And look at the results. That boy is willful, contrary. Contrary. I say in, he says out. I say up, he says down. I say yes, he shouts no. What about a dog? Huh? Maybe if we got him a dog. You remember that little sheep dog his mom and dad gave him. Ever since he was a baby, he's carried it around everywhere for comfort. Maybe it would help. You mean a 
Another stuffed animal? No, I mean a real one. Say, Chance, how'd you like to have a dog? Someone to hang out with? You know, like that little one you used to have, only real. Of course, uh, it'd be your job to take care of it. You'd be in charge. No! No, 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 no. I don't want to take care of anything. I don't want to be in charge. Haven't touched your food. You know, there's uh, some pretty fine mashed potatoes. Lick your finger and see. They used to be some of your mom's favorites. I shouldn't have said that. I just reminded him. Honey, I don't think he needs reminding. I don't think he's ever not thinking of her. Sweet dreams. Night night! Good night. You're my little angel, and I love you so much. Oh, don't wipe them away. Tears are good for you. Who said that? I did. I like the taste of tears. They taste like peanuts without the nutty part. Where are you? I'm lying by your bed on the floor. I'm gonna stand up now, but don't be afraid. I'm kinda scary looking. Ooh, I like the way you're using your blanket as a shield. Everybody knows that bad things can't hurt you if you're under a cover. That's not really true, you know. Huh? The covers, they're not really magical. But don't worry, I wouldn't hurt you. Not for anything. Oh, don't get too close. Lots of dogs are afraid of little boys. They are? I wouldn't hurt you. Are you sure? You're not lying, are you? Because I've heard you tell a lot of lies. I'm not lying. Okay, I believe you. Aren't lies terrible? Just when you think you can trust someone. How come your mouth doesn't move when you talk? Ooh, that's a really good question. Because I'm just a big stuffed animal. And you're hearing me in your mind, not with your ears. That way, even when you can't see me, you can still hear me even though no one else can. What do you mean when I can't see you? All right, close your eyes, just for a moment. Now, open them. See, you can't yes. see me, but I'm still here. Ta-da! Whoa! See, I want you to know that even when you can't see me, I'll always be by your side. But only if you want me to be your dog. Do you? I guess. Ooh, not good enough. You have to be sure. I can help make your dreams come true. What is it you want more than anything? I want my parents back. Ah, your dad. I don't want just a dad. I want a mom, too. Of course you do. Well, tell you what. If you let me be your dog, I'll help you with that. What do you say? Okay. Yes. I want you to be my dog. Great. But you also have to follow the rules. Rules? Yep. Gotta have rules. Without rules, everything gets messed up. 
Rule number one. I'm your dog. Okay. You can't have any other dogs, just me. Well, that shouldn't be hard, because I'm special. You have to love me. You have to do what I tell you to do. I'm a guard dog. So I'll always look after you. But to help keep you safe, you need to follow the rules. I promise never to ask you to do anything that will hurt you or harm anyone else, okay? What are the other rules? Oh, we'll get to those. For now, it's time for you to go to sleep. Rest is important, just like eating it helps keep the mind sharp and the body healthy. You haven't been sleeping well at all, but tonight you will. And you'll dream of me. What's your name? Name? Dog. Don't you have a name? I'm just me. I am who I am. But don't you have a name? Otherwise, how will I call you? You won't need to call me. I'll always be there. But if I want to talk to you... Oh, Chance, you know my name. We've been best friends since you were a baby. You remember that song your mom made up about me? Abba, 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 I love you. Abba, 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 you love me too. Watching after me all day, guarding over me all night. I don't have to be afraid. I never let you out of your sight. Abba, it is you. Oh, yeah, it is me. I'm sorry I threw you in the garbage. Oh, that's all right. You were very upset. One good thing about us dogs, we don't hold a grudge. All right, Chance, it's time to go to sleep now. Don't worry, I'll guard the door. Did you dream about him, Chan? I did! He said I would, and I did! He's gonna make my dream come true! Does does this mean you, you want a dog? I've got one. I mean another one, a, a real. No! No other dogs. What's for breakfast? <sighs> did, did you just ask to eat, honey? Yep, gotta eat and rest. It's important. Well, what's your favorite breakfast, Chance? Strawberry chocolate chip pancakes. <laughs> Strawberry chocolate chip pancakes? Coming up. <laughs> Homework, Chance? I don't have it. And that surprises me how? Oh, wait. It doesn't. What is your excuse this time? Um, my dog ate it. <laughs> I didn't even know you had a dog. I got one last night. He was in my room. Okay, and he ate your homework? I suppose if I called your grandmother, she would corroborate this story. Corrob what? Tell me the same thing about you having a dog. Oh, sure. She and Grandpa gave him to me. Okay. New puppies can get out of hand. But I guess we will see if you did your homework by how well you do on this pop quiz. Hold on a minute, Chance. It's 
seems I owe you an apology. It appears you did do your homework. Yeah. You did very well on this test. You got every answer right, except for this last one. Not even close there, but still, this is an A paper. Now, doesn't that feel great? Yep. Good job. Hey, Chance. Abba, where are you? Over here. Come on. What are you doing here? I thought dogs weren't allowed in school. Yeah, I think that's really sad. But I'm only here because it's an emergency. What happened? You broke the rules. I broke a rule? Not only one, you broke three. And it's not even lunchtime yet. What did I do wrong? Do you really need to ask that? Blaming me? I thought we were friends. We are. Then why would you blame me for your bad behavior? You know I didn't chew up your homework. You said you wouldn't hurt me. I wouldn't. If I blamed you for something you didn't do, wouldn't that hurt you? You remember you asked what the other rules were? Rule number nine, no telling lies. How am I supposed to know that? I'm not a mind reader. Well, I am, and I know you know better. Your dad taught you. Forget my dad, I don't want to talk about it. <sighs> I'm sorry I told a lie. Are you really? Yes. Okay, you're forgiven. Now let's talk about cheating. Oh, come on. How did you know? I told you, even when you can't see me, I'm always with you. The only answer on that test that you did on your own was the last one. And I got it wrong. That's because you didn't do your homework. You see how one mistake leads to another? I'm sorry. Are you sorry you did it? Or are you just sorry you got caught? Besides, being sorry is all good and well. But if you're really sorry, you have to stop lying and cheating. And stealing? <sighs> yep, let's see it. Left pocket. <sighs> That's a really nice yo-yo. Not your yo-yo, though, is it? You took that from the store without paying for it. That's against rule number eight. No stealing. Not from stores, not the answers from your neighbor's test. You remember you asked me to help make your dreams come true? But in order to do that, you have to follow the rules. I'm sorry. I'm really, really sorry. <sighs> I want you to know something, Chance. Everyone makes mistakes. Everyone. But I love you anyway. You do? Always. <coughs> but about that lying and stealing and cheating stuff, what are you going to do about that? dollars even. Out of ten. And seven dollars is your change. Thank you very much. <clears throat> you planning on keeping that extra change he gave you? Excuse me, sir? Yes, son. You give me too much change. This should be two ones and a five, but you hand me two fives and a one. Wow. You know, I don't see honesty like that too often. I tell you what, you keep it. It's a reward for being truthful. 
Thanks. You're welcome. It's a pleasure doing business with you. He let me keep it. You see, doing the right thing has its rewards, always. Not always. When I told my teacher that I cheated, I didn't get rewarded. I got in trouble. Oh, you also got rewarded. How? Well, next time you'll study, which means you'll get smarter, and that's a reward. And you won't feel guilty, and that's a reward because you'll sleep better. How's that homework going, Chance? Okay. Hmm. You could help, you know. Oh, you need my help? No, not you. I was talking to Abba. The dog? Yeah. Lots of kids have an imaginary playmate. It's normal. Italy is shaped like a boo? Are you sure? Okay. Normal, huh? Hey, you're almost finished with your homework. I got a surprise. We can watch that new superhero movie on cable tonight. But we don't get the premium movie channel. We do now. I tapped into Fred's next door. What? So, well, Fred told me he's got the full package and it was easy hooking ours up through his. You just gotta know how. But isn't that stealing? <laughs> huh? Taking his cable like that, isn't that stealing? Well, I'm, I'm not taking it. I'm just uh, sharing it. He's still got it. <laughs> Oh, like if I copy my neighbor's test in school, it's not like I'm taking it away from him. He still has it. <laughs> it's not like that. Like taking a yo-yo from a store without paying for it? If the cable company was a store? He's got a point. <sighs> I'll disconnect it in the morning. Wait, I've got a better idea. Let's just pay the cable company to set it up. Can we? Can we? <laughs> Doing what's right has its rewards, Grandpa. Always. <laughs>
That's breaking rule number six. No murdering anyone. Definitely not. Dog on him! Whoa, be careful what you say. What do you mean? You said dog gone him. Do you really want me to do that? Gone him? Make him vanish from the world? Could you? That would be awesome. Would it? He told me he will be waiting for me after school tomorrow, too. But if you made him disappear... Oh, that would be bad. Why bad? Well, with Robbie gone from the world, who would look after his little sister? <laughs> his parents. Oh, no. Robbie's parents got divorced last year and his mom left. So Robbie has to babysit his little sister after school. So being kept after is twice as bad for him because he knew his little sister was home alone when he was supposed to be with her. And he was afraid when you talked that he would get blamed and get held after again and get in even more trouble at home. When people are afraid, sometimes they get angry. But Robin is mean all the time. Any of the kids could tell you that. Maybe he's afraid his dad will leave him too. But what about tomorrow after school when he's waiting for me? I think I have a plan to deal with that. Come here. All right, I think this will be really fun. You know, how when you were a kid and you told me. you like salad. Yeah, I heard you like salad. Shouldn't you get home to your sister? You guys think you're tough, right? Tough enough. Yeah, tough enough. Tougher than you. I don't think so. And I can prove it. I like my salad with dressing. This is hot sauce. Go on, go ahead. Just like we planned it. I challenge you three to put some of this on your tongue. I'll go first, then we'll see who's the toughest. Well, why don't we just beat you up right now? You afraid? As if. As, As if. if. Okay then, here we go. Mmm, your turn. Drinking water will only make it worse. Hey guys, drink milk, not water! Or eat a spoonful of sugar! Or eat a spoonful of sugar! That was great! <laughs> Who's the best dog? 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 Who's the best We seriously have to cut back on that boy's sugar intake. Bike? Why do you need a new bike? Does your old one not have wheels? <laughs> Mine has wheels. Oh, no handlebars. Nothing to hold on to. Mine has handlebars. Pedals? How do you go anywhere without pedals? Mine has pedals. Brakes? No brakes. Oh, that is very dangerous. My bike has all that stuff, but... But? My bike is very old and I saw a really cool one at school. And you want one like that really cool one. That's against the rules. Rule number 10 says you shouldn't be jealous of people who have nicer stuff than you do, and you shouldn't want their nice stuff for your own. Why? Oh, it's much better to focus on being thankful for all the good things you do have. Seems to me you have a lot of nice things, kiddo. Like what? Oh, that shirt's pretty nice. 
And those shoes are so great. What's so great about them? They don't have holes in them. Do you know that millions of people around the world don't have any shoes at all? Or a house to live in? Or food to eat? Or even clean water to drink? That's in other parts of the world. Poor parts. Oh, really? Well, why don't you jump on that crummy old bike and follow me? Whee! What was that all about? What? That kid. He was trying to talk to you, and you just walked away. He goes to your school, you know. He does? Yep, and he doesn't have a bike. He has to walk the whole way. And did you notice his shoes? No. Holes. I don't think this is a good neighborhood to be in. Why? Oh, no, you're not. You are not thinking what I think you're thinking. You are. You're thinking it. You are definitely not thinking. Why? Because people have a different color skin than you do? You're afraid of them? Seriously? Chance, remember that summer when you got the really dark tan? Did it change who you were? Of course not. Of course not. Does the way people look on the outside say anything about who they are on the inside? Honestly, kiddo, could anything say less about a person than the color of their skin? <sighs> Put your bike down. Over there. Right over there by that wall. Yeah, right there. Now. Go a little bit over there. One more step. That's perfect. Oh no! Holy smurf! Oh, oh kid, are you okay? I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. The bucket must have slipped. So, feel any different? Inside, I mean. Hey, I get it. Hi. Hi. Wow. That's one sweet paint job. It is? Awesome bike. Who painted it for you? I guess I did. Wow. That's tight. I'm Jarrell. Your L? Like Superman's dad? Yeah, my dad likes comics. Cool! Well, bye. Hey, Drell! Yeah? I was talking to my dog and he was telling me about the difference between wants and needs. He said there are things that we want, 
you know, toys and stuff. And things that we need, like, like food, clothing, and water. Did you know there are some people without water to drink? How do they stay alive? Sometimes they don't. Anyway, I was wondering, how would you like to have my bike? What? My dog said you need it more than I do, and sharing is important, so I want you to have it. Really? Yep. Really, really? Really, really. Oh, That's the worst thing you ever did for me. Yeah. Wait a minute. What? Do you say your dog told you to give it to me? No, you let me choose. But your dog? Yeah, Abba. He's really smart, and he teaches me things. He talks to you? Yeah, he's not an ordinary dog. He's magical. He's a magical dog. A magical dog. A magical talking dog that knows everything. Abacadabra. <laughs> so, Dink, did he know I was going to do this? What? This. Uh, what's the matter? Are you going to sick your dog on me? Stop! Finally have your dog tell me to stop. I'm listening. I don't hear anything. Or maybe he doesn't want me to stop. Or maybe there is no dog. Maybe you're crazy. You gonna cry now? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I believe in your dog. Hate is a very powerful word. But yeah, most people don't like bullies. Or mean people. Or people who break rule number six, like you did. What? Rule number six is no murdering. That's right. I didn't kill anyone. I wanted to. But that rule doesn't just apply to people and animals. It applies to other things as well. Ants? Well... I never understood why someone would cut down an entire rainforest. That kills a lot of other creatures. But I was speaking more about spirit. What? Innocence, trust, belief. That little girl Sally, she believed. But harsh words can kill innocence and dreams and hopes and wonderful possibilities. You and she might have been best friends, but your words might have killed that. Hey, bro. Hi. Wow. Nice bike. The kid who gave it to me Rocked. You need to come to my house, bro. Oh, you don't have to invite me. No, you need to come to my house. My parents don't believe you gave it to me. Oh, okay. Hey, Sally. Hey, hey. I'm Chance, and I wanted to say that I'm sorry. I was really mad at those other kids, but I yelled at you. And I wasn't mad at you. I'm happy that you believe in my dog, and I'm really sorry. How did you know my name? Oh, Abba told me. Who's Abba? My dog. Your dog? Yeah, he knows everything. This is your house. You gave him your bike? Yeah, because your dog said you should. Sort of. I like your puppy. Hey! You wanna go down the slide? Sure! Yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh.
That was cool, wasn't it? I know. What do you want to do next? Come to a water fight to my house? Uh, yeah. What do you want to do? Play video games? Yeah, no. Or play tag? Play tag. Yeah, let's go outside and do our lives, not bring in technology. You know what I mean? Yeah. to finish what we've started. Don't back up. Stand your ground. Now what do I need to do? Lead. Bark. Huh? Bark. That's what I do. Now growl. That always works for us dogs. <laughs> He's a guard dog. An invisible guard dog. Must be nice. He's super nice and really smart. And teaches me things. Like what? Well, he once said, let your yes mean yes and your no mean no. You mean when you make promises, keep them? Exactly. And the rules. Huh? He taught me the rules. What rules? And if I obey them, he's going to make my dream come true. You guys really believe this? Yep. Sure. Why can't I see it? Well, sometimes you can just see him, and sometimes you can just hear him. But he's always there. How do you know? Because he told me he was. Let your yes mean yes, and your no mean no. Cool. What are the other rules? I gotta do my chores and homework. How about we meet tomorrow? And then I'll tell you then. OK, when? During recess. OK, I'm Cos, by the way. It's not contagious, you know. What? It causes condition. It's called cerebral palsy, and you can't catch it from him by shaking his hand. But he looks so weird. Well, some people think talking to a dog is weird. I think he was interested in being your friend. But that would be... What? Oh, what could we do? How can I talk to him? Well, you talk to him like you talk to anybody else. He's not stupid, you know. His body is fragile, but his mind is very sharp. In fact, he's the smartest kid in your school. No way! Yeah, way. And as far as what you could do? Lots of things. Sure, there'd be certain things you couldn't do, but giving those up would be worth it. But why? For all the things he could teach you. So many wonderful things. Like what? Like patience, gratitude, perseverance. What's that? That's not giving up when the odds are stacked against you. Like determination? Exactly. And ingenuity. What's that? Figuring out how to do things in a different way. Not to mention math. He could teach you that too, and uh, it seems to me you could use a little help in that area, kid. I guess I blew it. Yeah, but you get another chance tomorrow. That's the wonderful thing about tomorrows, is you always get a second chance. Good night, Chance. Good night, boy. You're a boy. I'm a dog. I should go to sleep. <laughs> Okay, you all can finish up after recess. <laughs> Wonderful 
things about tomorrows is that you always get a second chance. I'm Chance. What's going on? Word got around that you were going to explain the rules of Magic Dog taught you. Yeah. 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 Hey, is it true you have a dog that knows everything? Yeah. Yeah. Is it true? Don't you? True. Who told you sugar would stop the hot sauce burning? My dog. And why did you tell me? Because he told me to. Smart dog. <sighs> Robbie ate some hot sauce and I didn't want to help him because I was real mad at him. But Abba said sometimes people act mean because they're afraid. He also says that you have to put yourself in their place and try to understand why they act the way they act. Yeah. He says everyone wants to be liked. But you have to decide for yourself what's the right choice to make. If you get mad, it's okay. But when you do, you're not supposed to hurt anyone. So no hitting? Or saying mean things. That hurts even worse sometimes. If I do something wrong, it's okay. He loves me anyway. He loves you too. All of us? Yep. He told me to tell you that. Woo, Chance! Who says it's okay to do something wrong? And that he loves little children? Speak up! My dog. Yes, ma'am. Your dog talks to you. Yeah, yeah. Like a cartoon or a babe the pig. Sort of, except that his mouth doesn't move. Well, if his mouth doesn't move, how does he speak? I hear him in my head. You're hearing voices in your head? Not voices, just voice. Your dog? Yeah. You do know, Chance, that this dog is not real. Yes, he is. No, he's not. He's just in your imagination. No, he's not. He knows things that I don't. Like what? Well, all kinds of things. Everything. How long have you been talking to the other children about this dog? I don't know. Weeks? Yeah. Longer? Maybe. And they believe it all. Admit it. You made up this dog so the other children would like you. No, I didn't. Do you even know the difference between truth and lies? Yeah. And you know that telling lies is bad. Of course. He told me that. Who? My dog. <sighs> I recommend suspension. What? Oh, he is willful, insubordinate, and a little liar. Now hold on. Oh, no, he's told me a bald face lie. Invisible dog, indeed. I have here his record since he's been to this school. Moody, rude, angry, doesn't do his homework, doesn't participate in class, he's disruptive, and he cheats! No, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. Back up the Batsmobile. Now, you look at the date on that report. Uh, when was the last time he did any of that stuff? Well, it's been several months, and... He's shown signs of improvement, nevertheless. Now, I'll admit that the boy was a handful when we first got him. His, uh, his mother had just passed, and his father wasn't handling it well, and that can affect a kid. But then he started doing his homework and his chores and respecting his grandma and I. Right. And that was just about uh, three months ago. Now, do you know what also happened just about three months ago? He got that dog. You? Got him a dog? No, well, he, he found the dog. A stray? Not exactly. He stole it! No, he, uh, <clears throat> he dreamed it up. And 
the very next day, he began to change. It, it was really quite remarkable. He conjured it up. Mrs. and Mr. Chilton, do you believe in magic? No, of course not. We know it seems strange. Seems? But, but it's made all the difference in Chance's life. Lots of kids have an imaginary playmate, and psychologists say Are that... Are you a psychiatrist, Mrs. Chilton? No. Well, I happen to have a degree in sociology, and this delusion is very dangerous. The prisons for the criminally insane are filled with people who hear voices in their head. Now hold on one last minute. You saying our boy's a, a serial killer because he's got an imaginary puppy? Well, imaginary now calm down, everybody. Calm, calm down. Calm down, calm down, down, calm down everybody. So I'm line. sure Thank that's you. not what Miss McGillicuddy meant to imply. Actually, be quiet, Francis. <sighs> be quiet. Now listen, everybody. Listen. I'm sure there's a perfectly good solution to this. You can't talk about him at school. Here at home, it's okay, but not at school. But why? Because it's against the rules. You're always talking about obeying the rules, right? But what if it's a stupid rule? Sometimes rules seem stupid when they're there for reasons you don't understand. Like what? Well, in this case, uh, oh, I don't know. Doesn't make sense to me either. I hate Miss McGillicuddy. Oh, you know what I said about hate, Chance. But she's so mean. Maybe you should forgive her. No way. OK, that's your choice. Why don't you get into bed now? It's time to get a good night's sleep. OK. So, how'd you sleep? Hmm, I can tell you're really tired. You want to know how? Uh, you know how to sleep? That. Plus, you're brushing your teeth with hair gel. <laughs> <laughs> Keep laughing, more face. No, 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 no. <laughs> that water was cold. Maybe it'll help you to know that the reason that Miss McGillicuddy is so upset over you talking to your dog is because she lives with her mother, who is very old and has dementia. What's dementia? It's a sickness of the mind. She lost her memory, and she doesn't even know her own daughter. And she talks to her husband, who's been dead over 10 years. And she screams at night because she thinks there's monsters in the closet. I used to think there was a monster in my closet. So that's what Miss McGillicuddy comes home to every night. Kind of tough, huh? Yeah. And so, when she sees you talking to a dog that she can't see, she thinks you might be sick, like her mom. So she acts that way because she cares? Exactly. She worries about you, even though she doesn't show it in the best way. OK, I forgive her. Here we are. Come on, we go. All right. Hey, Jerome. Are you guys ready? Ready. Ready. I was born ready. Or not. <laughs> Oh.
giving us some good news. It looks like you and your dad will be able to be reunited soon. Yeah, Chance. He's doing well, really well, and he's so sorry about everything, and he loves you so much. He'd really like to see you, and I think it'd be okay. His hearing is in three weeks. And if you could spend some time with him No! This is all his fault. I never want to see him again, ever! I hate him! Crazy. Go away! I hate you! I don't believe in you anymore! Honey, are you okay? Are you talking to your dog? Don't be stupid, Grandma! There is no dog! The school guidance counselor, remember me? I'm looking at your grandson's records and he hasn't turned in his homework in over two weeks now. He's become withdrawn, antisocial. I believe it's beginning again, Mrs. Chilton. If you'd like, I can recommend a good psychiatrist. Hello? Hello? See where he gets it from. I can't stand you any longer. I've got to get out of this house. Stop him, Chance. Don't let him go. Don't fall asleep or I'll die. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up! Wake up! You're having a nightmare! I let her die. I was supposed to watch after her, and I fell asleep! Oh, no chance. It's not your fault. Oh, hush. Hush now. Hush. You're... back! I never left. I thought I drove you away. Oh, can't be done. But I told you to get lost. I wasn't the one who was lost. You were. Ooh, pretty bad nightmare, huh? Listen to me, Chance. 
Your mom was very sick, and there was nothing anybody could do to stop it. How about you? How come you couldn't save her? Oh, Chance, everyone dies. What's important is how you live. Your mom lived a good, full life, even if it was a short one. She was a wonderful person. Do you want to see her again? No. Take my paw. Now lay down. Now shut your eyes and breathe slowly. Now imagine the most beautiful place you can. Imagine that you're there. And I'm there. And your mom is there. nothing he could do to stop it. He fought so hard for me, but it was beyond him. That's what made him so sad and angry. Upsetting him and you was the worst part of my going away. You know what made it okay, though? Knowing that you'd have each other. And as long as you were by his side, a little piece of me always would be, too. You need to forgive your daddy. Maybe you should. Huh? Forgive your daddy. It's important to do what your parents ask you to do. That's rule number five. Your children are learning all sorts of things. This is Oscar, our class rat. And the children just love him. They get to take turns feeding him and cleaning his cage. It teaches them responsibility and teamwork. What happens when the thing dies? Well, then they learn about that. Any more questions? Uh, yeah. What's the deal with this stupid invisible dog? Excuse me? My kid keeps on talking about some dog. What are you teaching these kids? Yeah. My daughter goes on and on about him. He's supposedly magical? Yeah. Is this some sort of book you're reading to them? No. Yeah, my kid does the same thing. The dog says this, the dog says that. Apparently, the dog doesn't think it's a good idea if I have a few beers after work. Now, what's the deal with that? Look, I assure you that none of this is coming from me. The dog may be right. Okay. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Depending on how many you mean by a few. <laughs> <laughs> My kid talks about the dog, too, but I got to tell you, he's only teaching these kids good things. Right? Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, like how to disrespect their elders. Oh, no. Let me ask oh, not you at this. All. While you were getting drunk, did your son act disrespectfully or did he simply make an observation? Hey, lady, go suck a lemon. Don't speak to my wife like that. I will. I think she's right. The dog only teaches good things. One boy gave my son a bicycle after oh, learning about sharing. And my son is physically challenged. He didn't have any friends until the dog told him to be nice oh. to him. Oh. Do you know how crazy you sound, woman? OK, let's not start calling names. I called her a woman. You called her crazy. I think this dog is a good thing. I heard he helped them handle some bullies. Like a guard dog. Yes. There is no dog. It's imaginary. Well, what's wrong with that? Imagination is a good thing for a child. These kids won't know what's real. It is a hard world out there, and no imaginary dog is going to protect them. Or magically make everything OK. I say that all talk of this dog 
should be banned from this school. Yes! <laughs> already dealt with the boy who started this. But it's clear we need to see to it that no other children talk about this dog in school either. I'd fight that rule. Yeah. Yes. You can't tell kids what to talk about. Haven't you ever heard of the right to free speech? Yeah. It's the First Amendment, which apparently you teach at this school. This fantasy is spreading, and it is dangerous! Oh, thank you, Miss McGillicuddy. You may uh, get off the table now. Excuse me. Excuse me. May I speak on You are? I'm Sally Wilkes, Mom. Go ahead, madam. My daughter was painfully shy. Throughout first grade and second grade and the first half of third grade, she had no friends. No friends at all. Till she met the boy with the invisible dog. And he was kind to her. And now not only does she have one friend, she has many. And I know this sounds kind of crazy, but I think that dog's kind of magical. Yeah. I'd like to back that up. My grandson had a hard time last summer when he lost his mother. I'm afraid he didn't come out of it very well. Among other things, he was telling lies all the time. As a punishment that we thought fit the crime, we put hot sauce on his tongue every time he fibbed. But he did it so much, he got used to it. Hey! Good one. Well, anyway, when he grew close to that dog, whether real or fake, he changed his life in only good ways. He hasn't told a lie since. He claims the dog is real. Lies! Miss McGillicuddy, please. I'm, I'm Robbie's dad. Um, when I was a kid, I got picked on a lot, bullied. And I grew to hate bullies. I mean, really, really despised them. So you can imagine how I felt when my boy turned out to be a bully. He was picking on kids that were smaller than he was, being mean. And I tried everything I could do to get him to stop. I tried explaining why it was bad. I tried punishing him. I even tried bribing him. Nothing worked. Nothing. And I gotta tell you, it was killing me. And then this... This dog came along. And somehow everything changed. My boy is different. And I will be forever grateful for that. This dog has only a good influence on these kids. We've considered this matter, and the bottom line is, there is no dog. The dog does not exist. Therefore, we cannot Excuse allow... Me. My name is Jenny Johnson, and I work for Child Protective Services. And I think I know a little something about what's good or bad for a child. It's my job to determine just that. And the reason I'm here observing today. 
but I believe you're about to make a judgment on the assumption that this dog does not exist. Before you do, I say, he is real. Yes. Your, you're saying the dog exists. Yes. Just because you can't see him or touch him doesn't mean he isn't real. Well, apparently everybody's having fruit loops for breakfast. Miss Johnson. Superintendent Jacobs, let me ask you this. Is love real? Of course. How do you know? You can't see it. You can't touch it. How do we know it exists? Because we feel it. Oh, exactly. Because we feel it. Because of the effect it has on us. The proof that love exists is shown through how it changes us. Just look at these children. These caring, sharing, loving children. I think they're your proof that the dog is real. <sighs> Some people are so close-minded they'll never believe no matter how much proof is handed to them. So the time has come, Chance, for you to remember who taught you all these lessons before I did. I'm sorry, Miss Johnson. I learned it all from my father. Everything that I taught the other kids, I learned it all from my father. <laughs> Silence, please. Well, then, in light of this new information, I believe that we can dismiss this entire matter. Is it true, Watson, your dad taught you all that? What about Abba? He's not real? Oh, he's real. It's just the grumps couldn't accept that. It, is he here? Yeah, yeah, he's right there. Abba! You oh, can you see him? Him? You can oh, see him? I'm so crazy. I don't have this. What are they looking at? Who knows? Might be the invisible dog. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they can be pretty obtuse. What's that? It means they get one thing in their mind and won't listen to any other. You wanna know what's the worst part about it? What? 
all those people were deciding what I could or couldn't do, and none of them wanted to hear what I had to say about it. I know. It's tough to be in a hearing where people are deciding your fate for you. Well, at least you had Grandma and Grandpa to back you up. And Miss Johnson. And lots of friends. Sure would be horrible if you were there all alone with no one who believed in you. That'd be terrible, wouldn't it? Oh, no. Grandma! Grandpa! Mr. Watson, do you have representation? No, Your Honor. I just want a chance to explain myself, and then I'll leave it up to the court to decide if I get to be with my son. You're sure? Yes, sir. Well, we're a little more informal in family court, so I'll allow it. Excuse me, Your Honor. Jenny Johnson of Child Protective Services? Yes, Ms. Johnson. I know this is also unusual, but I'd like to speak on behalf of the defendant, if it's okay with you, sir. Unusual, but not unheard of. Mr. Watson, is this all right with you? Jenny can speak for me anytime. Really? Then please do so. I just wanted to say that over the past few months, Mr. Watson has received extensive grief counseling and I myself have met with him on a regular basis. And I have found him to be the most sincere, intelligent, and remarkable man. And this is your professional opinion? Yes, sir. And my personal. You know from my past appearances in your courtroom, Your Honor, how I feel about any kind of child abuse or endangerment. I cannot tolerate it. I've dedicated my life to protecting children. Yes, I'm aware of that. But as I've spent time with John, Mr. Watson, I've come to the conclusion that he is not a danger to his son or to anyone else for that matter. In fact, I would go so far as to say that if I were to have a child, I would want this man, I mean, I would trust that child to this man's care. That's all I wanted to say, sir. Thank you for that revealing Please. And what do you have to say for yourself, sir? First, let me say, Your Honor, that I don't have any excuse for the way I acted. But I believe there are those who deserve an explanation. You see, I, I loved my wife more than anything in the world. She was the perfect companion. And then we had a baby, and what I thought was perfect got even better. Boy, did we have nine great years. Then, one day, she just fell over for no reason. And we found out about the cancer. We tried every doctor, we spent every penny, and yet there was there was nothing we could do. I'm so ashamed of this. But the more she faded, the more I did too. Not physically, but spiritually. And the more pain she felt, the more pain I felt. I just wanted it to stop, but it wouldn't, so I, I just wanted to run away. And that night when I did, I lost her. I 
wasn't even there when she died. I was out driving alone, and I left my son alone, and she died all alone. And although my son said that he blamed me, I could see he blamed himself too. And I just couldn't forgive myself for doing that to my baby boy. It seemed I not only lost my wife that night, but I also lost my son. And I just kind of fell apart there for a while. Watson, I want you to know that my daughter goes to the same school that your son does. And he has had quite a profound effect on her and many of the other students. Last night, I attended a hearing at that school in which your son told us that the wonderful lessons about life and love that he's been teaching his friends, he learned from you. When I said that I meant... You don't have to say anything more, young man. But I was talking to my father It's and... okay, buddy. Mr. Watson, I think before your wife died, you must have been some special daddy. But, before I pass judgment, Mr. and Mrs. Chilton, do you have anything you'd like to say? We forgive you too, John. Do you believe you can take good care of your son, Mr. Watson? I believe that with all my heart, Your Honor. So do I. I'm remanding custody of your son back to you. Face dismissed. So the boy had his dad back. And the dad and the nice lady, Miss Johnson, got married and a year later they had a little girl and they named her abby after the dog yep that's me i'm abby and you were the little boy and it's all an absolutely true happily forever after story wow hey kids we came to say good night do you know you're worried about school tomorrow sweetheart no i'm not you're not. Oh, well, good. Night, night. Night, night, mommy. Night, daddy. Sweet dreams, baby. <laughs> you let your sister go to sleep. She's got a big day tomorrow. I'll be right out. Chance? Yeah? Do you ever see him anymore? Who? Abba. I don't need to. I know he's there. But still. Go to sleep. Bye night, Mom Good night.